Let's read uh, Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Matthew 18. We will read from 21. Read from 21. To 22. To 22. I want to teach you something. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how many times will my brother sin against me and I forgive him and let it go? Up to seven times, Jesus answered him, I say to you, not up to seven times, but 70 times seven. You saw that verse? Leibone. Not up to seven times, but Ay, 70 times seven. Ay, be shupa, ure, shupa. Let's pray. Arrapele. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In fact, I was learning what's the, what's the tuta? about the power of forgiveness. Matla, uh, just write it down. Power Malafas, matla. of forgiveness. Because if you can see, Peter might have learned something from Jesus. Jesus could just forgive. I remember when he healed people, he said, you are forgiven. I'm thinking, I wanted to think, where Peter might have learned that Jesus forgives even when it's tough. It was the time of the woman who was supposed to be stoned. Let's look at that time. When everybody came with a stone. And they asked him. Jesus knew that no. If they know. This man has done wrong. This woman has done wrong. They could just stone without us. So. When they fail, Jesus said, eh? Even me, I don't condemn you. Go and see no more. Jesus said, eh? Even me, I don't condemn you. But you still have chance to go. And see no more. So Peter learned a lot when he was following Jesus. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell the neighbor, Peter learned a lot when he was following Jesus. It means forgiveness. It's a principle that you can learn from others. Forgiveness. It's a principle that you can learn from others. Who practice forgiveness. Let me give you an example. When somebody hurts you, you are the only one who knows how far you can forgive the person. But many are around to Ma judge you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Either they want you to do what they cannot do. But it's a principle that can be practiced learning from someone. So if you read here, Jesus answered, he was saying, go extra mile. Let me show you another verse like this. It says, in Luke 7, verse 47. Maybe you'll understand. That verse. 
go back to what I'm saying. Luke 7, Luke 7 verse 47. Verse 47. Tell your neighbor, forgiveness is also a principle you can learn from someone. He said, therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much, but he who is forgiven little, love little. Amen. Did, did you see that verse there? That verse shows that the reason why we have ability to forgive is because of love. Tell the reason why you have ability to forgive is because of love. Listen, Jesus was saying if you know where you come from. It also determines how you will love. That's why Jesus was saying there. That's why Jesus was saying, saying, Can you see where you come from? If I come from far from my sins, there, and then when I'm forgiven. I'll be able to forgive. Can you see? It's not only the practice that you can practice it because you saw someone practice it. It's also the understanding of where you come from. Forgiveness, you practice it better. When you know where you come from. So, your knowledge of understanding where you come from, where God took you, makes you to forgive better. I'm sure you understand that. So, that's what Jesus was showing that The reason why you see Christians forgiving is because they were forgiven. So, now, that's why they will love more. That's why they will know where they come from. So it is easy not to stay in an offense if you know what God did for you. You cannot dwell in an offense. Not that you won't be offended but you won't dwell in an offense. Tell somebody you won't dwell in an offense but that does not stop people to not to offend you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read this. What Peter was saying. Luke 17, 1 to 4. Luke 17, 1 to 4. Let's read that verse. Concerning repentance or changing from what somebody did. Luke what? Luke 17, verse 1. 1 to 4. Look at that verse. It says, Jesus said to his disciples, stumbling blocks are sure to come, but woe to him through whom they come. It Amen. will be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and were hewed into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Pay attention and always be on guard. If your brother sins and disregard God's precepts, mm. solemnly warn him. Amen. And if he repents mm. and changes, forgive him. Amen. Even if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times and say, I repent, you must forgive him. Amen. Jesus was teaching how you can forgive. He was showing in the beginning that it is not you who is supposed to fight for yourself. 
If you know the one who fight for you, you will forgive. I don't know if you are hearing that. So he says, if you know the one who forgives or who has forgiven you, it will be easy to forgive this one. But he brought a challenge. He said, you must forgive if he comes to say he repents. Can you see, sometimes Forgiveness is having conditions. If somebody say, I'm sorry, you can forgive him. I mean, to say I'm forgiving you is because he said sorry. So that's why the Bible says, if he comes if to, to say he repents, forgive him. So the question is, if, what if he doesn't come to say he repents? Can you look at this verse clear? You realize that Jesus was copied on verse 3. Say, so pay attention and always be on guard. If your brother sins and disregards God's concept, solemnly warn him. When I'm and he repents and changes forgiving. You see that verse there? If he sin against God's concept, and he comes to say, I'm sorry, forgive him. him. I know one scripture that talks about carrying each other's burdens. Because otherwise, when someone is tempted, you can also be tempted. I don't know if you're hearing that. Carry each other's burdens. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if someone is tempted, that person needs the spiritual people to restore that one. There are some people concerned that God can use to restore that But here, the Bible talks about God's concept and he repents forgiving. The Bible shows that if that person is not doing what is right, automatically, is as good as he can be hanged with milestone and thrown into the sea. It's better this happen. It means the worst can happen. I want to warn you. Forgiveness is our way. It's a way that God deposited in your chest. Can I tell you this? If God wants to bless you, there has to be a challenge against you. Let me say it again. God wants to bless you. People have to hurt you. But if they come to say sorry, forgive them. So the question is, what if they don't come? What if they don't come? Their temptations. It means they are ready to die. I don't know if you're hearing me. It means already they are your enemies. So your enemies need God. They don't need you. We don't need to fight our enemies. They need God. They don't need you. You have right to be condemned if you don't pray for the one who does not repent. Who repent. You are the one who is condemned. When a person comes to you seven times say sorry, if you don't forgive that one, you are the one to be condemned. But if you forgive the person, he's the one to be condemned. I don't know if you're hearing me. Amen. Many of us, we have offenses in our heart. Many things that has happened to us, they are still in our hearts. And sometimes it's you are failing to let it go. Don't forget that God is the rewarder. When God wants to bless you, he allows 
all those people to come and tell you. Think about the one who challenged you. Think about the one who tried to stop you. When you forgive that one, you are giving that one to God. God cannot leave that one. He is so powerful. His power cannot be compared. I don't know if you are hearing me. As I say, my friends, my friends, my friends, when somebody hurted you, if he forgives you, if you forgive him, you are giving him to God. If you forgive that person, give him to God. Tell, take your enemy, give him to God. If he's not repenting, give him to God. If you still carry on fighting you, give him to God. God of heaven is watching. There is a time of everything. There is a season. It's coming. I don't know if you are hearing me. But if a brother sin against you and he come to you, forgive him. I don't know if you are hearing me. As I say, my friend, is there anybody who hated you? Forgive him if he comes to you. Forgive him if he comes to you. Hallelujah. Look at this verse. In Matthew 12, verse 32, it's only one one verse that shows that there is no forgiveness. In Matthew 12 verse 32, he says, whoever says a word against Jesus will never be, for, will be forgiven. Will be forgiven. But who says against Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. Can I show you that verse in the Amplified Bible? Amen. Let's go there to Abraham. In Matthew 12, verse 32. Verse 32. Are you ready? Amen. That verse is challenging. Me. Matthew 12, verse 32. 32. Are you there? All right, let me read for you. It says, Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, Jesus will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. I want to show you something there. Let me read everything that has been written there. It says, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit by attributing the miracles done by Jesus to Satan Amen. will not be forgiven. If you attribute the miracles done by Jesus to Satan, Holy Spirit, you will never be forgiven in this age and the age to come. You know this verse is teaching us what? Don't judge the pastors. It's, it's telling us what? Don't judge pastors. Because look here, it says by attributing the miracles done by me to Satan. When you take any miracle you say is not from God, is Satan. Already you won't be forgiven from this age and age to come. It is very dangerous to speak up against any servant of God. It is very, very dangerous because look here, if you cannot be forgiven in this age and you say even the age to come, it means you will be condemned this side and also punish on that side. Your punishment just not start on the other side. In this age and the age to come. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell us my friend. It's only when you speak against the Holy Spirit. Tell him It's only when you speak against the Holy Spirit. 
You know when I was reading this I began to say We need God to forgive us. Forgiveness this power. Forgiveness. I don't know if you hear me. Because if you read that verse, you will realize that many times we have already judged ourselves. And that's why we are facing all this. There is punishment in this age and the age to come. It's because you attribute the miracles of God and you think it's Satan. When you see somebody doing miracles, you must ask God forgiveness. Because those miracles are speaking that God is there. And if you are a sinner, you need to repent and change. But if you change it and speak against it, you are speaking against yourself. It's very dangerous to speak against someone. You need God to forgive you. And you need to forgive someone. Tell him, you need God to forgive you. And you need to forgive someone. I don't know if you're hearing me. Look here. Before that miracle come, there's a lot of temptation. Before God lift your name, raise your name. There have to be something that brings a judgment on you. The first one is when people hurt you so that you speak against. I don't know if you're hearing me. That's the first one. It's surrounding. What is it that surrounding is giving you? Let me give you an example. I want to tell you something. Can I tell you? Let me show you by this. Let's get two people here. Two people here. Two, come. come. Here. This one is a Christian. This one is not a Christian. Can you see this too? When this one, can you walk? When you walk, you hit him on the left, on the right side. You know, this that has happened here is not him doing it. It's challenging what this man is having. Let me say it, I come back. When you pass here, Look at him and laugh at him. <laughs> Tell him no, you pass him, you laugh. Oh, You pass, pass. Oh, fita wa izamaye. All right, okay. Meet again, meet him, but look at him. You must normally when you pass him, laugh at him, you pass. His actions are not judged. You as a Christian, you can be judged. The challenge, listen, if this Christian can do the same, your small action is so big that it can be talked by everybody. Right. If this one pass. Let's take this one is a Christian. And then laugh at him. He you know what he's laughing at? Eh? He's telling you that you still have something that people can laugh at. When you forgive him, you are telling God, teach me about that. I don't know if you're hearing me. I get come. Come back. Walk on top of him. Hold the leg like this. And you pass. Forgive him. What he's doing on you is telling you that 
He wants you to behave the way you were behaving before. But to show that that thing is no longer in you, you forgive him so that God will speak with you more. I don't know if you are hearing me. Alright. Can you just come here? I'm trying to show you what I mean. Face him. When you pass there, pray that to him like this. This man is not wrong. You're the one who's wrong. When you are being pointed like this, when you say, I, I forgive that man, God now will come and say, you know why he's pointing at you? Because now you're forgiving him. You are, you are standing where God stands. God is a forgiver. So God will say, you know why? This is a temptation. That person was sent by Satan to come and attack you. But he failed. You were supposed to have done more. I don't know if you are hearing me. Listen, don't allow Satan to enter you. There are some people that they are agents of Satan. If you don't forgive them, you are like them. They become part of you. They become your language. You talk about them. You eat them. You seek them. And from there, Satan enters. I don't know if you are hearing me. Okay, go and sit down. Thank Amen. you. This is a challenge we are facing. Many of you, you are still holding the grudges of the past. Whoever offend you, you hold that person. He becomes better than you. I don't know if you are hearing me. So forgive that person, make that person smaller. Carry on with your destiny. Live a better life than him. And God will take you far. If you believe, shout hallelujah. How many of you are hearing me? Are you hearing me? Say, hey, I don't want your offense. Look here in Mark 11, 25. Mark 11, 25. I love this verse because it's clear. Mark 11. Mark 11. Verse 25. 25. Can I read it for you? He says what? When everyone is hearing Stand praying. If you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Amen. So that your father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgression and wrongdoings. Alright, I will read it again. In Amplified Bible. Listen, he says, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, drop the issue, let it go, so that your father who is in heaven will also forgive your transgressions. Let it go. Can you tell neighbor, let it go? Can you tell the neighbor, let it go? It is easy to bring God at work. You let it go. I don't know if you are hearing me. You know, there are some people that, that you know, in Isaiah 54, I'm sure, 17, that any word that is against you. You can condemn it. That scripture is talking about there. It's when now God has lifted you another level. And you are hearing something. If you are hearing something, condemn that word and say it won't happen. God forbid it won't happen. People say they will die. It won't happen. Condemn the word and say it won't happen. You are not condemning the people. Condemn the word. In other words, cancel the word. I don't know if you are hearing me. But this one says, it is impossible to pray if you have unforgiveness. This scripture is telling us that he will pray. 
He must make sure that he doesn't have anybody in his house. It is impossible to, do a, to pray. In other words, there is no prayer if you have unforgiveness. That prayer is rendered to zero. The Bible says, let it go or drop the issue. It means you are holding it. Unforgiveness is something that is in your hand. And God can give you anything in your hand because you are holding something there. So allow it to pass or drop it and go and pray. From today, don't allow anybody to stop you in your Christian life. Never allow anybody. You have got your own chest. Deal with your chest. Deal with your heart. God is aware of your situation. Can you tell somebody say, God is aware of your situation. I don't know if you are hearing me. God cannot take you from far to drop you here. You know, God can take you from far just to drop you here. There's a journey. Let me prophesy you. From now on, as you are dropping the issue, God is lifting the level. As you are dropping the issue, God is raising another level. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Shake somebody and say, hey, shout hallelujah. Say I'm dropping the issue. I'm forgetting the pain. I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm not looking back. I do it like Paul. I press on. I press on. We need Christians who can press on. Shake somebody, I press on. I cannot dwell where I'm failing. My God is on my I'm moving forward in the name of Jesus. Because many of us, listen, many of us, somebody can just come and destroy your day. I don't know if you're hearing me. Have you ever found something like that? You are in the church, before you enter the church, you receive a call. You receive a call. Or maybe after you pray, when you are, you are, you are still burning, somebody just can boom and throw a bomb so that you think about it. You know, I have learned it. The best way of dealing with people on earth, don't forget where you come from. If Jesus forgave you, forgive them. I don't know if you are hearing me. You must not forget that you were not good. You were not even good. Sometimes you could not even sleep when you are angry. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Now, if somebody touches you in the wrong place, it's provoking you to go back to them. You know where you come from. You have moved forward now. Don't turn back to the things of the past. Move on to a higher level. Because where you are going is close. Look at Joshua 24 verse 19. If we read it, it says, you can't serve God with unforgiveness. You can't serve God with unforgiveness. In other words, saving God shows that we are forgiven and we can forgive. You can't serve God with unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Let me give you the last scripture. Maybe. Matthew, Matthew 9, verse 6. I just want us to look at that verse there. Matthew 9, verse 6. Ask your neighbor, are you having an offense? <coughs> but. Fela. So that you may know that the Son of Man has authority and the power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to paralytic, get up, pick up your stretcher, 
and go home. Amen. Can you see that verse there? That verse shows that the power of forgiveness gives us the ability to perform the same way the same way God performs. Jesus said, can you see I forgive this man? I can also heal him like my father. Forgiveness gives you power to do things the way God does it. Just write it down. Forgiveness gives you power to do things the way God does it. In other words, unforgiveness limits us. Can you see limitations? It's because somebody hurt us. We are failing to forgive. Somebody said this, whatever. From tomorrow, we make it a topic. We want to find back this, that, whatever. Forgiveness gives you power to perform like him. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you want to look at your performance, just forgive everybody. Just, just forgive everybody. When you worship, worship like you have never been hurt before. It's not that your mind will forget because remember Satan will always bring things in your mind. But in your heart say, it's over, the Lord is in control. We are in the world which is dirty. We are in the world that devil wants to use to trap children of God. But if you're a child of God, just forgive and focus in him. You get ability. Look at Jesus. This man was paralytic. Paralytic, it means there were some places in his body which was a challenge in, in him. Always paralytic. People find ways of dealing with them, of helping them. But Jesus said, oh, I'm here to die for sins. I can see this man has sinned. And this sin has caused him to be like this. I forgive sin. Everybody complain. Jesus said, because I've nullified the sin, therefore we don't need the fruit of the sin. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. And it happened. Can I prophesy you? Today, you will speak things like your father God. And it will happen in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout hallelujah. You need to perform like your father. Your father forgives everyone. When the rain comes, it doesn't look who is a sinner, who is a drunkard, whoever. He forgives everyone. So when you forgive everyone, you receive the same power to perform like him. I don't know if you are hearing me. You can speak things unto existence. You can profess there will be a rain, the rain come. Because the ability of your father is in you. Why? You are, you are standing on the same level with him. I don't, I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. Somebody is here. I'm saying drop that issue or let it go and carry on with your father God. Drop that issue and trust your God to do mighty things in your life. I don't know if you're hearing me. Shake somebody and say, hey, drop that issue. Let it go. See what God can do for you in the name of Jesus. Drop that issue and let it go by forgiving and see God working, blessing you, raising you in front of those who hated you. Don't fight for yourself. It is your time to rise up. It is your time to take charge. It is your time to live your life in fullness. Forgive that one and reach a better life that God wants to give you. If you believe, shout hallelujah.
God has lifted you. Don't look at what Satan, Satan, is, Satan is doing. Satan look unto him. Pray, pray for them. Bless them. Raise them. Say, if it is the will of God, I allow it. I allow it. And from there, God will speak. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. That is a method that God gave me. God gave me this method. Check somebody say, my friend, forgive someone. Your family knows something about you. But you know where God took you. You know where God took you. You know where God took you? Shake somebody say, my friend. Do you know where God took you? Do you know where God took you? Can you ask your neighbor that? Do you know where God took you? If you know where God took you, you will forgive. I say you will do what? You will really forgive. Rise up, we pray.